All right, welcome back everybody to the 2018 Sedgley Woods Monthly Tags. This is Derek Skull from Gatekeeper Media. And this is Chris German, and we have final round front nine coverage, MPO. Uh, today we're gonna be playing 10 through 18 doing red, odd, yellow, even. So it should be interesting. We're gonna see some new looks here. Yeah, so whole 10 got uh, from yellow tee box. Uh, different, significantly different look from the blue tee. Uh, it's going to be same, relatively same distance, but you're going to be coming at it from the left side of the basket. Yeah, I think it adds about 35 feet onto it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, though. A little so, more narrow. So we have Nick Knapp here, first one on the card. He's leading currently at 8 under. And he hits an early tree. It's going to knock him far right. I'm sorry, far left. Uh, it's going to be some work from there. Yeah, uh, it's, he'll be able to have a shot, though. So we have Dan Jay here uh, sitting at two strokes under as his, oh, just hits that little branch. He's a little more more in the fairway, so it's going to be a manageable up for him. He's going to probably play it safe because he's got that big tree to worry about. Yeah, he's got to get around that. So we have Alex Caldwell here, third one up. He is tied with Dan Jay currently. As his is looking pretty good right up the middle, and he also hits some branches. So, we, you know, the lead card here is just having some trouble getting down the fairway for to start their round. But let's see what Jason Kofer has to offer here. It looks like his wants to skate right through there and okay. gets a nice little Ooh. skip. I think it skipped off the tee box there, actually. I think it did. Uh, so he's definitely the only one to really get down there and have the, the best look for a birdie here. Stan's just, like you said, just going to do an up shot. Pretty conservative, but he gets down there. He should be able to tap that par in. So we have Nick here. Uh, he's over in the woods. He's going to have to battle up there, and he's running it. Just comes up a little short. Yeah, made it through, though. Uh, he should be able to, his caliber, be able to make that as well. So we have Alex here on one knee. That, you know, shooting like that is really going to decrease the type of speed that you can get because of the lack of follow through with that shot. But, he, you know, he's, he's able, he's within that range of getting that par. But yeah, it looks like it hit that log and just kind of died out on him as. Kof just runs that a little too low, though. So he hits the hits the basket. Yeah, we see Alex getting his par here. So, yeah, I would say from here, everyone should be able to to make their pars here. So we have Nick up, pretty routine. We got Jay. No, I'm sorry, Dan Jay. Dan Jay, yeah. yeah. So he knocks his par in, and you can see him here. He's kind of calling it out uh, on camera. Can we tap that in? Can I get that for you. Yeah, let me get that for you. We all know that Cope's going to make that shot, so. Yeah, I would just say it's just uh, courtesy. Sportsman's, sportsman like. Yeah, so uh, first hole here, we have everyone parring out, uh, keeping Nick Knapp with a two stroke lead over both Dan and Alex. So we move to red tee box hole 11. That's going to bring you a little more right than the average look for a, a blue tee box player. I believe yellow is slightly behind blue. So you got a slightly different look. It's going to open up in the same spot for you so you want to get by that recently downed tree kind of bring you up to where this loose dirt is so that's area for a lot of skips going on up here yeah very fast green down here uh, a lot of dirt so you kind of want to keep it a little light plays pretty short uh, a little more straightforward here is dan's going to hit that or, or nick's going to hit that tree there so he's going to have some work for his up dan up here he's Taking a similar line, manages to but get through that, and there's that skip that we were talking about. That fast green, I mean, that pushed him 50 feet uh, past where he could have been landing. Uh, he's going to have some work there. He's going to be putting back. So we have Alex here. Uh, let's see what he does here. I'm guessing probably just a slight Anheuser route. So that's the avenue that I probably would have went, wanted, would have wanted to stay to the left, I'm sorry, to the right of that tree. As he luckily hits that tree. If not, that would have been skipping past where Dan's was basically at. So Kof just hitting that early tree, and that's it's tough luck there. But I see what he was doing. He wanted to keep it close to that so that it had that carry through, give him a little extra distance. So he has some work here for his up. And he hits another tree. Very small one there. Battling like that and hitting tree after tree is going to do a lot to your mental game. Uh, so it, it takes a strong player to be able to kind of still pick up, battle through, and you know, don't bring that, that feeling to the next hole. 
Yeah, as Nick's able to just lay that up very professionally. So we have Kofi here. This is for his par save, and just a little short, and then it rolls behind this tree, and that's going to be a tough look for him for his bogey save. So we have Dan Jay here. As he's, uh, he's pretty far in there, and he just misses that. We got Alex trying to do the same thing. This is for his birdie. And hits chains and bounces out. Tough break for Alex there. So we have Nick here just tapping in his par. And you'll so. notice that even though how close he is, he still puts the bag down, still plays and does a full putt. So, you know, you don't want to take those things for granted. That's how you add strokes to your game. And Cove missing that bogey putt. That's tough. He's going to have to settle for a double there. Uh, guys, make sure you come and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, become part of the family. Uh, make sure you hit the notifications. Have that on so you're the first one to see when we release new videos. So we have a lot of great coverage coming up for the 2018 season. This Cove just knocks in that double bogey, and that's a tough, it's a very tough way to start this round. That's not how I would like to go into hole 12. <laughs> no, uh, being hole 12, what it is. Uh, as Nick, Dan, and Alex all par out, and Cove taking that double bogey, putting them two strokes behind the card there. Let's move the hole 12. Hole 12 from yellow today. Uh, it's going to add a little bit more distance. Still keeping it a par three. Uh, you want to battle right down that narrowing portion in the middle of the fairway and get yourself up to that, again, that loose dirt. So you, there is a, a drop-off hill at the back of that. Yeah, so. there's a farther basket. So we're playing close basket here, but you can roll down that hill as uh, Nick's just stays a little left. And when you're in that rough, you still do have some alleys, some small gaps to get through, but that's not an ideal location. Yeah, I would say you want to get up to where that big tree is on the middle of the fairway there, as Dan's kind of where Nick's is, a little to the left of that tree. Is Would you say this is the toughest hole in the course? I, I would say it's my least favorite. <laughs> yeah, this hole can uh, make or break you, as we saw in round one. Uh, that's not that's not a perfect shot by Alex, but that's that's a really well placed shot, so that he has a little bit more to work with, a little more room to kind of yeah he get can, up to the pin. He can get around that tree a little easier. His coast is looking pretty good as that's cutting back on him and his rolls back and good thing he hits that whatever that was uh, log or something. Him. As you can see, he's right in front of Alex. There is Alex. And, and this is very interesting to me, because being a right-handed player, that's a shot built for a standard hyzer shot. Just float that right in there, much like Kof did. And he, he took that forehand round. That was a very interesting uh, approach there by Alex. Stan's going to take a forehand here as well. And his, his looks like it's not going to get through. I think it hit a, the tops of a couple trees. You see it wobble out, but it managed to fight through and place himself within, I don't know, 15 feet from the basket. And here's Nick with another amazing upshot. Is he's just parking these upshots, man. So Alex has some work here for his par, but he he runs it. Uh, it's very rocky down there. So as long as you get down there, Nick calling out the fact that they're taking too long, and he just wants to tap in because you know, no one wants to see a tap in anyway, as uh, he says. Yeah, but uh, we do want to provide you every single hole, every single thing, uh, the full coverage in its entirety. So. We have Kofi here. This is for a par save, and that's a great putt by him. I would say after the last hole, that's a confidence builder, I would say. Still plenty of golf to play. And we got Dan Jay up. He's going to try to save that par, and he does. <clears throat> and Alex here is going to be the, the lone bogey, and that's a tough one for him. As Alex takes the lone bogey there, it's going to lose a stroke on Dan. Uh, Nick, Dan, and Jay all taking uh, pars here. So we move to hole 13. Hole 13 from the red tee box is uh, pretty tough. Uh, there's this goalie here. You just got to make it over all these trees. Uh, if you hit the slightest branch, you're going to fall down in there. And then you can have a bad time if you're down there. There's a lot of trees. Battling uphill is never good. No. Battling uphill with a lot of tiny branches in your way is monumentally worse yeah so these guys are uh, gonna put some power into this and just make sure they get across so we have Nick here still on in the box and his holds that Anheuser line yeah it looks like it uh, went near 14 T box probably it just held that line we weren't able to get that uh, catch on that you got Dan that should be taking a very similar route his is a little tighter this is looking a little better 
and he gets stopped by that log there but that's that's a look yeah you want to be up there if you're up by that log you're you're in a good spot you can at least run for a birdie from there uh, what you don't want to do is hit a tree and fall into this goalie as you can see Kof just hits that little branch and that's exactly what we were talking about so he's going to fall down into the middle you can see how it just takes all the power out of the disc and just floats short. So Alex is looking pretty good, and that just kind of gets hung up. It gets caught in that little little bush there. I believe he does take a drop on that. So Kofi, like we said, working up, a lot of trees. He goes an Anheuser route as well, and he's able to, to manipulate it up there, so he's got something to work with for sure. Yeah, it was good up. So like we said, Alex took the drop there, and... From this distance, I mean, you want to at least try to run it. Just slightly uphill. It's just that's a very tough putt to make. And Nick being up here, he goes. He really wants to run that as well. He's got some distance, and unfortunately, hits this low-hanging branch <laughs> right in front of him, and happens to roll himself further than what he was putting yeah, from. That's very tough. As we have Dan here, almost the same distance as he sinks that birdie with confidence. Yeah, that is a very great putt by uh, Dan. There, it's going to put him a stroke under. And I think uh, that might warrant a uh, gatekeeper yeah, rewind. Yeah, what do you we, think? yeah. Let's let's give him a rewind on this one. I think he it's deserved. And guys, let us know what you think about the rewind. It's something new that we're trying out this season. Hope hope you enjoy it. As we just want to see that awesome putt by, by Dan again. As Nick here is basically in the same position as he's going to try to replicate. Just gets a little high on him. It looks like he almost clipped the, the number sign on there. I just missed it a little bit. As Nick's going to take a bogey there, and that's a, that's a big point swing uh, for Dan and Nick there. That's a two-stroke swing. So Kof's able to save his par after getting out of the goalie. And everybody, don't forget to stop on over to our Facebook page. Uh, you can see the URL there on the screen. Uh, follow up on all the articles that we like to share, all the pictures we're taking, all the updates of the events and things. And It's where kind of where our home base is, so make sure to follow. Yeah, moving in the hole 14, we have Nick and Dan both tied up at 7 under with Alex two strokes behind at 5 under. And hole 14 is a, it's a fun one. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's really something that I use to flex that Anheuser muscle. Uh, that's one of my favorite shots to, to do. Looks like this card is primarily going the standard route for a Heiser float in there. Yeah, and Dan's just kind of stays straight there, never uh, fades back on him, as it's pretty tough. And we got Kof doing the same thing here, and he's going to find himself a neighbor. Yeah, that's, that's really tough, guys. It's just keeping a little too straight as Alex here looks like he's going to take the left forehand route and then he's he keeps it over there he lofts it right over to the right and it gets stopped by that tree but that's something that is where you'd like to be yeah it's manageable down there and it's very interesting it's the same kind of forehand he threw on hold 12 uh, it's kind of like that that Anheuser forehand throw it's a very interesting approach there so Nick's going to replicate both Dan and Kofi here, just straight shots right into that rough over there. And there is a slight gap in there, but a lot, a lot of twigs and yeah, branches. Look at all those little trees and, and twigs. It's And you're it's, straddling a hill. It looks like Nick is just slightly too low. Yeah, I apologize about that, guys. The camera slipped. That was a little disorienting. So Dan is trying to do that, and he makes solid contact. It, it does look like he hits that red red bar up at the top. Yeah, that, that was dead on to the pin. He just, wanted that shot. Just a little too high. That great putt by him, though. So we have Kof here. He's just trying to get through and just smacks that tree and drops him down. One could say that that saved him from finding himself on the bottom of that other hill. So we have Alex here looking for his birdie putt. Only one to get down, and that's a great putt by Alex. Slightly uphill, and uh, definitely needed that stroke on the card, knowing everyone else is going to par. So Nick knocks that in. Dan should be able to tap this par in. And it's good golf here. This is going to tighten it. It's going to make it a little tighter now. We got, we got Kof here. He's just got his little tap in. You hear some of his friends from another hole shouting. Yeah, as Alex is the only one to get the birdie there now. Only one stroke separating him between Nick and Dan. Uh, Kof's still trying to fight back from that hole 11 with that double bogey. So moving to hole 15, uh, red tee box. This is a completely different look from blue and yellow. Uh, it's slightly to the right. 
uh, you're going to be going straight ahead and then it kind of dog legs to the right here and opens up similar to the rest of the looks and you want to you want to kind of be in that open area where that dirt mound is uh, ideally you'd like to be to the left more so on the fairway than the right the right has that cluster of trees that rough is a little more condensed yeah it's a little tougher low hanging branches as alex just takes a really bad roll he hits that tree and you kind of hear him say that it looked like a bad roll he even came up to me after when he walked up and said how how far did that roll back as that was a tough break for for alex stands is i kind of lose it here but you can see it rolls back and that's a great roll by dan that probably rolled at least 25 feet. Yeah, it's just Alex is rolling backwards and Dan's is rolling forward. All right, we got Kofer here lining up, seeing what he can pull pull off. Looks like he's going to take the uh, Anheuser route, as that's looking that's looking really good. Holds that line. He's getting that skip up. That should be that's a really great great tee. Yeah, if you want to be near that that pile of logs there, if you're near that, I mean that's a it's a makeable birdie putt. So we have Nick here. And when he gets that early release, puts him right there in the, the bushes. I, I think that slipped out of his hands, maybe. That just left really early. So he hits another tree. And that is not not as grateful of a, a roll. Yeah, this is this is looking tough for uh, Nick here. This is a par save. Tries to float that in, and he misses it by a couple inches. He almost Kobe that, walking away and everything, fade away. As Alex, with that bad break, is not able to make his birdie putt. All manageable par saves, though. His dance just sunk on him. It looks like the power just gave out. Yeah, he's shaking his head. He knows. He knew as soon as he let go. And Kof able to get that birdie, and that's, that's good for him. He's been fighting back since the beginning of this round. Uh, knowing that he got a birdie here. Sorry for the shotgun start there, folks. That was, sometimes it's not easy to get in the location where we need to. And looks like we got Dan and Nick here kind of doing a playful dance yeah. with their... And that was uh, on cue, man. That was synchronized as Nick's going to take that bogey there. Uh, so that's going to give Dan the lone lead here, sitting at seven under, uh, just playing par golf here. Nick takes the bogey at six under, which is going to tie him up with Alex Kofer with the birdie, putting him at four under. So move to hole 16, another different look, I would say. Yeah, it only migrates it over maybe 15 feet to the right, but it puts you directly behind a couple obstacles that's going to make it a little more challenging for you, for sure. Yeah, and I would say here we're kind of showing the left route. Uh, there's multiple routes you can take here. This is a very creative hole. I'm going to predict that everyone's going to probably be taking that and or the hyzer to the right. Uh, this is more the left side, so we'll see um, what people do here. As so we got Kofer with the flick, he's keeping it low. Funny enough, to that left side is oh, just hits that tree. But he's he's still in a good area. It's going to be wide open for him. So as long as you take your time, float up there, you can definitely lay up to save your par. Yeah, you can probably even run it. As Alex just lets that rip. Yeah, that that really got, took off on him. Yeah, that uh, he got down there though. That's that's a birdie look. As long as you don't hit one of these early trees, you're in a pretty good spot. Stands is fading a little early on him, but some tree loving, I would say. Pushed him to the right side of it of of that tree for sure. So we have Nick here had a really unfortunate break last hole. It looks like he clips that tree up high and it just kills it in place. Uh, this is tough for Nick, man. This is. It's not looking good for him. But, but he's he's also been pulling a lot of really solid ups here, just like clockwork. Yeah, that's and that's a that's manageable for him. That's routine for him to make that. So we have Kofi kind of behind these trees here, but it's, like Derek said, there's definitely a look. He's running it, and that that wasn't far off. No, it was that was a great run by him, and should be definitely a, a par save for him. So Alex is kind of on 14s fairway there and he misses that putt one that I think he wished he could take back and solid connection of the chain saving that birdie that's a really great putt man that's a dead eye man he's he's got these long putts sinking and you know we gave you one let's give you another one let's give them both let's see it Dan uh, well deserved here Dan great putt 
with Nick here, knowing that Dan just got that birdie, he's going to have to lose another stroke on him. So he's able to knock that par in. Uh, his eye's kind of going that glove. It looks like he's uh, eyeing that glove up. So he, he was very con like very concerned if that was Alex's or not. I, <laughs> I don't actually believe it was. I don't think so. But he went and grabbed it for whoever it was. As uh, Alex and Kofe both are able to get their pars here. And with that being said, Dan gaining a stroke on the card. The lone birdie sitting at eight under, two under for the round. Nick, two over for the round. There's a four stroke swing there between the two guys. So we're gonna move into the last two holes here. So hole 17, yellow. Uh, it's gonna be very similar to the blue look. Just adding a little, I don't know, probably 50, or, uh, 25, 30 feet. Yeah, about 30, 30 to 40, because I think it's 171. Mm. So we're going to 2.11. But so. you're still battling uphill. It plays shorter than you'd think it does. Uh, you want to make sure you get up past the crest of that. And if you land level, it should be able to skip closer for you. His stands is just a little far there to the right. Um, he definitely probably wants, wants to take that back and go a little more to the left. So we have Alex here up on the tee box. Let's see what he does here. And I believe this is from the red, actually. Uh, red odd. So, yeah from the red oh. tee box so that's pretty short shot for red actually 211 this cove is looking pretty good here and, and that's the type of shot that you want that tree really did kill it he would have been pretty parallel to the basket yeah, that, that would have skipped up pretty fast green as you hear nick's frustration uh i don't think he knew that he landed that close to the basket <laughs> just kind of hit that tree there Looks like Dan is running it. He probably was wide by maybe three feet, three, four feet. And he'll be putting back for his par save. Not a terrible way to beat to the last two holes here. And that was so close for Alex. It's a I little think he wanted a rewind. Yeah, it's a little more power. So Kof here, and that looks like it tapped the chains. Hit the top of the chains there. So we have Nick here. Let's see what he can do. And... That's a much-needed birdie on his end. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, these past couple holes have been he's, really strong. He's, he's celebrating. Yeah, everyone's cheering him on. He's uh, All these guys are good friends, I believe. They uh, they play probably every every week together. They're they all have, friends of Sedgley Woods, I believe. Yeah, they all, they're all good people here. Don't forget, if you get a minute, head on over to Instagram, gatekeeper underscore media. That's where we post a lot more of the behind-the-scenes pictures and stories and things like that so uh, it was funny they uh tried to synchronize just like uh dan and nick they were a little off it was funny because i think uh Kofer was like uh i already took a plus two i didn't want to risk anything there <laughs> having a splash out as we moved to the last hole for uh front nine coverage here hole 18 uh from yellow tee box just pushing it a little farther back just straight forward uh, 283 feet just keep it straight down the fairway uh, you want to get up by this mulch up here uh, the mulch kind of kills it out, so you don't get any crazy skips, I would say. This is a hole where you definitely want to drive it down the gut of the hole and and really try to park it as close because you always have an audience here. Oh, man, that was that was a really good ace run there. Um, I do believe that might be CTP. I, there was a CTP on this hole. So we have Dan here just uh, keeping that one-stroke lead over... Nick, knowing that Nick just parked that. And his looks like it was going to go far left and, and managed to float right back into the middle of the fairway. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's kind of near the edge of the circle there. So we have Alex up. He's, looks like his has some power and he hits that tree. It was looking good too because that probably would have flexed back on him. So Kofi here, that just kind of is pushing really far to the left. And it almost looks like his wrist turned and he almost hit somebody. Cool. That was probably off by a couple feet. Yeah, that was uh, that was very close there. As I don't think he even knew anybody was over there. No. And this is uh, this is the story of Alex's uh, front nine. I would say it's just really bad rolls. A yeah, tough break, man. And that was just a weird angle and just took it really bad. A good upshot though. He's gonna get up there, but he's unfortunately gonna have to settle for a bogey here. You'll notice that we showed the the remaining shots of Alex kind of all in a row. Uh, we were waiting for somebody to catch up to have their shot, so um, we, you know, we went a little out of order to keep the pace of the game. Mm -hmm. Stan tries to run that; it's not unsuccessful. So we have Kofi here, great looking up. Yeah, for sure. 
as he's going to be able to park that. So we have Dan here for his par save. He's going to be putting back now. Still a tester. Oh, and it dunks right off. It hits inner inner basket and bounces right out. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, and this basket sits a little lower than normal basket, so it's a little tougher. It kind of throws you off a little bit. So we have Nick here. He's going to sink in that birdie. And he, he's moving. Looks like Dan was, was the good friend he is. And he's like, hey, dude, you got, yeah. got CTP, man. Yeah, you got to eye that up. Uh, but that's going to be big with Dan taking a bogey and barely sneaking that in. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's something that makes your heart skip a little bit. Uh, with Dan taking the bogey and Nick taking the birdie, that's a two-stroke swing there. And uh, funny enough, Nick fights his way all the way back to even. He's, he's going to sit eight under. Uh, Dan does gain a stroke on the round, only sitting at seven under. Alex two strokes behind him at five under, and Jason Kofer able to get the four under. So that wraps up front nine coverage. Yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Please be sure to come back and see us for the back nine coverage of Lead Card MPO for the Sledge Sedgley Woods March Monthly. Yeah, and I would say we have a we have a surprise for the uh, back nine, right? We're not going to say anything. Oh uh, yeah, but... no, but you definitely want to see it. So yeah. uh, make sure to stay tuned. And this is Derek Skull, and this is Chris German, and, and take care, everyone. Yeah, we're Gatekeeper Media.